Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found a YouTube channel and then to the video today we're looking at why warming up before exercise is beneficial. There isn't a respectable personal trainer in any sport that doesn't stress the importance of warming up before you begin a workout or athletic endeavor. Most people seem to know you can prevent injuries and allow for better performance should you follow their advice. So what is it about warming up that allows for these benefits? What exactly is going on in the body when you more slowly prepare it for strenuous activity rather than just jumping right into it? The simple answer is that warming up increases blood flow to muscles, allowing for an elevated amount of oxygen and nutrients to be delivered. This prepares the muscles for a rise in workload. Warming up will also begin raising body temperature, which helps you utilize oxygen better. That boost in blood flow also serves to prime the nerves supplying your muscles with impulses, increasing the quality of performance. Along with the blood flow and temperature benefits, an appropriate warm-up also prevents injuries by providing greater range of motion while simultaneously improving the lubrication of joints, allowing for better movements. So that's the high-level view of it all, but what exactly is going on internally here? So first, let's have a look at what gives your body the ability to deliver more oxygen. It seems common sense that if the average heart rate is about 70 beats per minute and each beat ejects approximately 70 milliliters of blood, then your heart will circulate about 4 4.9 liters every minute. The higher the heart rate, the more blood will be pumped. During extreme exercise, studies have shown that your heart can pump up to 30 liters per minute. So the question then becomes, why does slowly increasing heart rate and by extension blood flow versus suddenly leaping into action and rapidly increasing blood flow allow for better performance while reducing injury? Well, when your muscles are working harder than normal, they require more oxygen and more nutrients. This provides all the electrolytes responsible for the electrical impulses providing for muscle contraction and glucose to start a cascade of chemical events leading to the production of a molecule called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is responsible for moving these electrolytes and other molecules into, out of, and around your cells. Oxygen is also essential in creating ATP. When oxygen is used to create ATP, it's called aerobic metabolism. When you increase the work of your muscles past the point oxygen can make the appropriate amount of ATP, your cells begin to use more glucose and acids to make more, which is also known as anaerobic metabolism. The byproduct of anaerobic metabolism is the increased production of an acid called pyruvate which also creates lactic acid. These acids will cause all kinds of damage to your cells. The resulting pain that follows leaves every marathon runner in agony the next day. The maximum heart rate at which your cells can use oxygen to make ATP is known as your VO2 max. So now the question in your mind is probably, well, what does all this chemistry have to do with warming up? Studies have consistently shown that your VO2 max is increased when you warm up slowly. This is because the many small capillaries that supply your cells are closed when resting. Should you open them up, they'll be more able to provide the extra oxygen and nutrients to the working cells. So warming up will cause those resulting capillaries to open up. Thus, when the event starts and you really need them, they'll be able to handle a higher VO2 max and you get a better performance. For example, in one study, people were subjected to sprinting at maximum effort for 10 to 15 seconds without warming up. 70% of them had abnormal ECG findings. These are the electrical impulses providing your heart with its needed contractions. These abnormalities were attributed to inadequate blood supply to the heart and aerobic metabolism. Those affected 70% of participants were then allowed to warm up for just two minutes prior to sprinting, again for 10 to 15 seconds. This little of a warm up was enough to reduce the ECG abnormalities normalities by 90%. Another way your body gets the benefit of more oxygen is by raising its temperature and making your cells more acidic. An increase in your body's temperature will support faster muscle contraction and relaxation, as well as a boost to nerve impulses and raise the metabolism of cells. One of the mechanisms for these results revolves around how your body carries that oxygen. The molecule within your blood responsible for circulating oxygen is called hemoglobin, which attracts and subsequently releases oxygen thanks to the affinity hemoglobin has for oxygen. That affinity is measured by what is known as the oxygen-hemoglobin dissociation curve. To spare you a very lengthy technical discussion of how that works, what we'll say is that in a nutshell, each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen molecules. That doesn't necessarily mean it will carry four, but only that it can. The amount of oxygen it does carry is called oxygen saturation. The more oxygen around the hemoglobin, like in the case of hemoglobin exposed to the air in your lungs, the more saturated it will become. In environments where there is less oxygen present, like in the case of cells that are experiencing anaerobic metabolism, 
hemoglobin will release the oxygen. That free oxygen is then readily available for your cells to use in order to create ATP. At higher body temperatures and more acidic environments, hemoglobin will release more oxygen compared to lower temperatures and less acidic environments. Should you warm up, your increased body temperature and the slightly higher acidic environment inside your cells will cause your hemoglobin to release more oxygen. The result increases your cells' ability to make more ATP using oxygen and giving you the competitive advantage of an increased VO2 max. These results are known as the Bohr effect. Thus, increased blood flow combined with the greater oxygen metabolism accounts for several of the known benefits to warming up, namely the performance enhancements provided by the increased VO2 max and the priming of the nerves supplying your muscles with their necessary impulses. So now let's move on to injury prevention. It's widely known that warming up will prevent muscle injuries, specifically preventing painful tears and strains. No study to date though has definitively shown the exact mechanisms causing the damage. Get a group of people to subject themselves to a study administering muscle stress so great it will tear them while a team of researchers monitors everything going on internally, then you might be able to provide some detailed insight. But until then, the leading theory is that these so-called cold muscles are less elastic and shorter than those that aren't. Along with the muscles, your ligaments and tendons also tighten up when not particularly used. Should your subject use stiff muscles, tendons, and ligaments to the force required for strenuous activity, they may snap or tear, somewhat analogous to how a cold rubber band will snap quicker than a warm one when stretched. So warm up, then stretch appropriately, and your rubber band muscles will be able to better elongate, thus helping to prevent injury. As the theory on injury prevention goes, your joints will also begin to become more lubricated during warm-up, allowing for greater range of motion. This is because the production of fluid that brings oxygen and nutrients into the joints, while also providing lubrication called synovial fluid, is increased during exercise. So warm-up and your joints will be better able to handle the stress and increased range of motion needed for athletic performance. So I really hope you did enjoy that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, we've got a book recommendation for this episode if you're interested in learning more about this subject. It's called The Simple Science of Building the Ultimate Male Body. There's a link to that in the description below. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. We rely on these generous people donating to this channel in order to keep making these daily videos. So if you're interested in helping us out, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today. I found out we've got loads of great perks lined up for people who help us like uh, posters and all, all sorts of things so go check that out and as always thank you for watching